You are listening to Straight Talk with Trevor. Wait, Daddy, how many times are we going to keep doing this again? Straight Talk Society. This is your host, Trevor, and I am back with another episode of Straight Talk with Trevor, the podcast where no topic is off limits. So on today's show, I want to I want to pick up from a live that I did earlier this week. It was just a quick five minute live before I went into work. And I've been doing that more often on the uh, on the Facebook uh, on the Straight Talk Society page. So if you aren't a, a member a member or liker of that page, just go ahead and give your boy a like. You know, just follow the page. You know, sometimes I put you know exclusive content on there and stuff like that. You know, of all the new shows first. You know, any live video that I do, it's being done through there. So just give me a like. It's not gonna hurt you. Um. And, you know, as most people do, just like it and then you can mute me if you don't want (laughs) to, you know, you don't want to get any updates, but just go ahead and give me the like. So in that, I was talking about um, like men and the battles that we fight, you know, like the hidden battles that we fight and things that go unnoticed and how we deal with things that. Oftentimes we've been told to just be quiet and, you know, men don't cry and just deal with it. You're a man and, you know, and then we end up just dying in silence. And I asked a question. I said, you ever wonder why if you look in a lot of families, a lot of the grandfathers are, are gone and the grandmothers, the women are always in the family. Most families, you always have your grandmothers. Some Sometimes you have two of them. But you you rarely see the grandfathers because all grandma, all grandpa did. He knew he was he was conditioned to just work all his life, work hard all his life, work his fingers to the bone for his family all his life. And then he just sat there in silence and died. So on today's show, I want to have a serious conversation. I'm going it alone, but. Um, this is something that's just been weighing heavy on my mind, especially with our recent um, personal experiences and things like that. And, you know, as always in my shows, I always say I like to deal with topics that other people don't deal with that I think is really crucial to our community. And I like to try to be the voice of the voiceless because I want to just get these things out there that's taboo because Mental health for men in the black community is so taboo. You know, you listen to women talk their whole thing for 2022. And I want to say it started since like 2020, probably before that. But I started noticing it then. Women were always like, 
oh yeah, I'm focusing on my, I, I got a therapist. I'm, I'm focusing on my mental health and girl, I'm trying to get it right. And da, 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 da. But as men, we just were there like, yep, just trying to survive. Just trying to survive. We never talk about our mental. We never talk about our emotional health. But don't worry, Mr. Straight Talks got you tonight. And I'm going to be jumping all over the place, but I want to start with a quote that came from um, Jesse Owens. And it says, the battles that count aren't the ones for gold medals. The struggles within yourself, the invisible, inevitable battles inside all of us. That's where it's at. And I was from Jesse Owens. Um, so he's saying that the battles that count aren't the one, the ones for gold medals. The ones that count are the struggles that you have within yourself. And just so you guys know, I am going to the Bible today. I am because you know how I feel about the Bible. I love the Bible. And I think the Bible is a book that could be used to help us see the bigger picture in life. Not necessarily that I agree with everything in there, but I think that I could use any story in there to, to relate to today and teach the bigger point and the bigger message. So I'm going to be going to the Bible today. And first, I'm going to go to Romans chapter seven and verse 19. And it says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. So here you have the writer of Romans saying that basically I want to do good, but that's not what I'm doing. It's the evil that I don't want to do. The evil that I know I shouldn't be doing. That's what I find myself doing. And now I want to go to my foundational scripture. Let me see if I can still do this because it's been it's been over two and a half years since I last preached. So let's see if I can still do this. John, the 20th chapter and the 21st, 24th verse says, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, play, pay close attention to that called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. So I'll get back to Brother Thomas later. But earlier when I did the live earlier this week, I quoted Mike Tyson because he was on a podcast with uh, Keenan, Keenan Thompson from Keenan and Kel. And Keenan was giving them all type of praise and saying how he's one of the greatest men to walk the earth and blah, blah, blah. And Mike Tyson just looked at him and said, yeah, but do you know my shadow? And when he said that, that, that shit just stuck with me, man. Cause I was like, damn it, man, I got it. Keenan was praising that part of Mike Tyson that everybody sees the great fighter, the knockout artist. But Mike Tyson was like, do you know the part of me that only I know? Do you know the part of me that only I got to deal with? When everybody leaves and all the fanfare is gone and I go home at night and I'm left to my own devices and my mind, do you know that person? And that's what this show is going to be entitled today. It's entitled The Other You. Not the you that everybody can see. Not the you that, that, that can put on a smile even though you're hurting inside and not the you that that's so cordial with everyone and could, could laugh and giggle and joke and and make everybody feel good. And you could be there for everyone. Nah, I, I, I don't care about that. You today. Nah, I'm not talking about that. You I'm talking about the other you. The other you that stays up for hours at night crying because you just don't know how you're going to make it. The other you that even tries to think like, what would life be like if I'm not here? 
I'm talking about that other you. And then somebody will say it'll be like, man, Trevor, what? Like you're talking crazy because it's me. It's just it's just me. You know, I'm just this one person. OK, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. But let, let, let's talk to my brothers. Because until recently, man, we we never put a premium on our mental health. And just so you guys know, I did my first um, YouTube panel Saturday night. It, w- it was crazy just <laughs> being on the show in front of all those people. But I'm going to actually be on the show tomorrow, Monday at six o'clock on the Arena Uncensored. And we're going to be talking about um, it's it's entitled Mental Monday. So we're going to be talking about men's mental health. So be sure to check that out if you got a chance. But as men were taught from a young age. You don't cry. You suck everything up. And men are supposed to do this. Men are built this way. Men are able to take all the, the everything that life throws at them. But I'm sorry. You know, regardless of what some of you guys want to think, we're human. And we cry. We have insecurity. We have doubt. And sometimes, because I know somebody will say, well, why don't you just talk about it? Because I don't think sometimes people know how to listen. Let's face it. Sometimes when men talk, if they're they're talking to their woman, their woman already has it made up in their mind, like I'm somehow going to relate this to something with me. So the guy's talking and talking and talking and they're like, yeah, but yeah, but instead of just listening and, and it's not until recently we had these platforms, you know, like everybody has a podcast now. So everybody, I I always say, I'm just a guy with a microphone. Everybody has a podcast now. So everybody could get online. Anybody could start a YouTube page. Anybody could go live on Facebook. Anybody could do live and just talk about it. But now we have this outlet. This is the first time where men actually have a space to come out and say, Hey, I'm hurting. Hey, I'm broken. I'm destroyed. Why doesn't anybody Listen, why doesn't anybody care about me? That's the other you. You know, I read a story um, from the observer and it says that there is no way out. Black male suicides are raising faster than any other racial group. Growing up, that that was that was the furthest thing in the world that black men would choose to take themselves out. That that life would get so hard that they decide, you know what? This life isn't worth living anymore. I'd rather just take myself out. That was unheard of growing up. And then somebody will say, oh, were men, men were stronger back then or, or, you know, they don't make them like they make, like, you know, they don't make them like they used to. And I'm guilty of saying that a lot. And a lot of times that's bullshit. That only, you know, that, that, that's only in regards to certain things. But suicide amongst black men are at alarming rates now. And then we often say it's just like a serial killer when you'll say, oh, I had no idea that that he was capable of doing that. He was such a good boy. He grew up from a good family. His his his, you know, he had a wife, he had a kid and he had a loving, you know, loving upbringing. But meanwhile, he's going out at night chopping people's heads off. You never know that other side of someone and I could bring it back to this is like you see people and I always use the term function functioning alcoholic you see us and we go out and we work and we we 
We do everything that we have to do. We take care of our families. You know, we deal with, with the pressures of work every day and we do it day after day, year after year. But whole time, that other us, that other one on the inside of us is just dying. And there's a war between the two that they're just constantly clashing. Let me let me let me go back to Brother Thomas. This is where I use the Bible to, to, to teach people things of today. So John 20 and 24 says, but Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus was with was not with them when Jesus came. And what they're referring to is after the cru- um, after the crucifixion where Jesus appeared to his disciples. You know, he came back to his disciples and he told them, hey, I'm going to give you power to do this, this and that. And they were all happy. Like, hey, he 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 rose. What he said was going to happen, happened. But the Bible makes clear to let you know. That Thomas wasn't there. So all the all the disciples are are, are gathered in this one place. Jesus shows up. And they're all happy. Oh, God, a resurrected Savior. He's back and he did what he said he was going to do. But Thomas wasn't there. And all the time, you know, growing up, growing up for over 20 years, being in church, you always would hear them say, oh, he's doubting Thomas. He's doubting Thomas. They would always call him doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas, doubting Thomas. And that's the reason why I get on church people so much, because they just make stuff up. The Bible never called him Doubting Thomas. We gave him that name, Doubting Thomas. We judged him on a temporary moment. We judged this guy's whole life on one temporary moment of weakness and gave him the name Doubting Thomas. The Bible never called him Doubting Thomas. So the Bible says that but Thomas, one of the 12, called Didymus. That's what I want to focus on right there. <laughs> because being away from church for so long, it like legit has made me study things. And I'm like, well, why would, if, if it says Thomas, one of the 12, we already know who they're talking about. But then why every time they refer to him, they always refer to him like called Didymus, called Didymus. There's other scriptures that says called Didymus, called Dim- Didymus. So I'm like, man, this Didymus has to mean something. So I'm big on, especially with the Bible context and trying to find its, its, its true meaning. Um, it's a Hebrew book. So I want to know, I always want to know what it really meant. Because it, we have the translated version. And I'm pretty sure there's a ton of things left out of there. So the word Thomas comes from a Hebrew word name, uh, Taomi, which means twin. Didymus comes from an ancient Greek word meaning twin. So if you say his name Thomas in the Hebrew, it means twin. If you say his name Didymus in the Greek, it means twin. It's not saying that he was a twin. This is just saying that his name means twin. Watch where I'm going with this, because it's, 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 you know, whether you believe it or not, because and this is what they do to men all the time. We get a name. We get judged for our moment of weakness. Here you have a man, Thomas, that the whole Christian world refers to him as doubting Thomas. The Bible never called him that. Jesus never called him that. But they gave him that name and they judged this man permanently on a temporary moment of weakness. And that's how. A lot of men are. His name 
means twin, however you say it. Doesn't mean that he has a twin. There's no nothing on record that ever shows that Thomas has a twin. His name just means twin. And and let me let me tell you something about Brother Thomas because we'll say, oh, Thomas was a coward. He didn't he didn't want to believe. Earlier in that same book, in John eleven and sixteen, Thomas said to the other disciples, "Let us go with Jesus that we may die with him." That doesn't sound like a coward to me. But we judged him on that one twin. We judged him on that one him because we didn't know the other him. We didn't know that scared him. We didn't know that scared twin. It wasn't, it wasn't two people that looked alike. I'm talking about the other twin that was inside of him. Whether you may, somebody may be listening to this and they say, oh God, Trevor, this has got, got to be the most pseudo thing you've ever said. Well, you know what? You might be true. You might be right. But you're not going to be able to convince me that there's not more than one of us inside of this body. How many times have you wanted to do something? And then you sit there and you're like, you just feel the internal war within you telling you, oh, no, nah, nah, don't do that. Don't worry about that. Don't. That's your other twin inside of you telling you, hey, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, go ahead and kill yourself. The, 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 wor the world would be better off without you. And that's how many millions of men, they just every day, they just sit there and they, they go through, they go through all the shit and the trauma throughout the day. And they got this other twin just barking in their ear. Go ahead, go ahead, do it, do it, do it. Pull the trigger, pull the trigger, take the pill, just do it. Somebody, you know, so I, I could hear right now, somebody's probably like, what the hell is this dude talking about? But until we admit that we aren't all that we appear to be, that's the only way we'll end up getting help. Until we admit that there's two sides to us, that's the only way we'll end up getting help. You know, we, we, we always say it like, man, just recently, all the celebrities that, that have committed suicide this, this year alone, when you hear it, what, what's the first thing they say? Oh, I didn't see any signs. I didn't see the signs. I didn't know. I, I never knew something like this guy, but that's right. Because you don't know their shadow. You don't know the other them. All you know is that that's presented to you. You don't know the other version of them that's warring constantly in their heads. There is a constant battle of good versus evil going on in the both of us. And that's going on inside of people, whether you want to admit it or not. How come people, people, people at the top of their professions, you think about this. People that can be at the top of their professions, man. I mean, making all the money, all the fame, every single thing going good for them. But the minute they get by themselves, they put a gun in their mouth. Because that other twin, that other one inside of them, they haven't learned how to conquer that one yet. And that's the one we got to deal with. That's the one we got to learn to be passionate, show some compassion towards. That other twin. I know, God, I know, because even when I'm saying this, I'm like, damn it, boy, that, my, my audience is going to think I'm crazy. 
but I'm not, I, I, I promise you, I'm not, I'm, I haven't gone mad. I haven't been, <laughs> I haven't been doing any drugs or anything. I promise you that. I'm telling you, man, there's an internal, there's an internal fight within humans, man, especially black men. Let's look at it this way. How could a man that just loves his family so much? I mean, loves his family more than anything. You know, God is got his family to the the, the pinnacle of, of where he wanted to be. Well, not necessarily where they wanted to be, but got their family onto a level where they're they're making strides and they're getting to where they want to be. And he loves his wife. He loves his daughter. You know, he loves his family. He, he, he cares about his family and his friends and everything like that. How could a man like that get in a moment of weakness because of certain issues and decide, you know what, life may be better off if I wasn't here? I'm going to tell you how a man like that could do that. You know why? Because I'm that man. Everything that I wanted has been playing out the way it should be with a couple of hiccups here and there, but nothing too much that you can't handle. But that's that surface level stuff because it's like every victory costs something else. It's like every victory costs a little more. Every triumph costs a little more blood. And sometimes I just lay it in the bed at night and I have to war. I have to war with my internal. I got to fight against myself. I'm not fighting against demons. My fight isn't against any demons. My fight is within myself. It's me and my twin just constantly going at it. It's me and my twin just a constant battle, man. Like, you know, we're, we're, no, you, you got here, but that's it. You can't go any further. And I legit sometimes sit there and think, would life be better off without me in it? I'm not the richest man in the world. I'm not. But we make a good living. I don't live in the greatest community in the world, but I have a beautiful house, beautiful wife, beautiful daughter. What about that life that would make me question keeping it? It's the constant battles, man. It's the constant battles. It's 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 that other twin. It's like Mike Tyson said, it's that shadow. You never know what a person is dealing with mentally, man. A person can have it all together on the outside. I said it in my live earlier this week, man, that I like I'm uh, mentally I'm a wreck. Like you guys know the character. You guys know the character, Mr. Straight Talk. I'm the guy. I'm going to stand up and I'll say whatever. And it doesn't matter. I'll challenge anything and I'll stand up to anybody. But sometimes when I'm left alone to my own devices, I'm scared. And I'm alone. Isn't it funny, though, that we could be alone <laughs> even when surrounded by people that love us? Isn't it funny that, you know, you, you can have everybody in the world that loves you, everybody rooting for you. But you can let that one voice in your head try to cause you to just do so much harm. I 
I said in my life that um, I think it's imperative that people, especially towards black men, give us a little grace. You know, you guys give grace to everything else. Just give us a little grace. Because some of us are trying so damn hard. Some of us are just holding things together by a thread. But we're just trying so hard to keep things together. Let's go back to Brother Thomas. So we've always called him Doubting Thomas because that's that's what we were taught to to call him Doubting Thomas. He he wasn't doubting. He was just afraid. He was afraid that what if everything that Jesus said didn't really wasn't really going to happen that's why he wasn't there that's why he wasn't there with the other with the other disciples he didn't want to be let down that's why some of us aren't there we just don't want to be hurt anymore and it would be easier to live out of a cave where we feel that nobody could get us and we can't be hurt again and we can't be let down again. So just give us a little grace. You know, I often, I often come hard on, on my brothers. <sighs> And the reason I do that, because we could be so great. I mean, like if 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 black men across this country just stood up and just collectively got together, we could actually impact some real change. But man, there's so many of us wounded. We're like we're like the wounded warriors. We just go through battle after battle after battle after battle, wound after wound after wound after wound. And we just constantly continue to fight, continue to fight. But every battle scar takes another piece of you. And then at some point, you don't have anything else left to give. You know, <laughs> I, I, I look at the analytics and the majority of my audience is men. So that's why I could do a show like this. I'm, I'm hoping that some of you guys would just listen and just really take what I said. I mean, because we need some help, man. It's really, it's really good that it's really good that we have platforms now where we could talk about things and we could go out and voice our voice our views now and not be silenced anymore because you ever look at you ever look at the family reunions and you see grandpa grandpa's always in the room always locked up in his room or he has or he's just in his chair surrounded by women being quiet he can't say anything because there's no one there that can relate to him We love our women. We love them more than, I mean, hell. <laughs> we love our women more than anything in the world. But we don't speak the less, we don't speak the same language. We do not speak the same language. And it takes for a man to say, hey, I need some help. And reach out to some other brothers that he could trust. 
see, I have the luxury because I, I, um, I have a secret, I have a secret society, basically <laughs> shout out to the man cave where we can discuss anything in a judgment free zone. Like we could talk about whatever we need to talk about, but you have men in there that could give you some advice on how to handle things. And then, you know, sometimes even if they can't give you advice, they could just listen. I implore my, I, I implore all my brothers. See, I told you this wasn't going to be long. I implore all my brothers to just get, get around some positive brothers, man. You don't, you don't have to be around a hundred. 10 would be good. Five, five is great. You know, if you, if you can get around a couple of positive brothers, man, that could speak life into you, that could give you some type of encouragement. And don't let anybody belittle you and tell you, oh, oh, you're such a you're such a simp. You, 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 you need somebody to talk encouragement to you. And this. Yeah. Yeah. You got damn right. We do. Yeah. Everybody needs a little encouragement sometime. Just that's why I say I'm I'm real. I'm real happy for my group, man. We're real solid. We don't agree on probably half the stuff, but they're there for me. You know what I mean? And I just think, I just think as men, the resources are there. We got to do better. I mean, you guys always, you know, I have, um, Mia on on the show, and she's a she's a tremendous marriage and um, family therapist. You know, she's always available to schedule a consultation with her or something like that. Man, it's it's the resources are there. We can't continuously just sit there and die. See how we men we die. <laughs> Men, we die, we die quicker than women. Because one thing about women, if they're going through something, oh, they'll go seek some help. They'll be making a whole plan around your ass. <laughs> they'll seek some help. Women aren't women aren't being taken out. Like I mean, they, they deal with mental issues, but not like us. Because one thing about them, when they get to a certain point, they seek the help when we get to a certain point we just want to end it all and that's the difference but you know like I say I'm just a guy with a microphone I don't profess to be a doctor I'm not a therapist or anything like that I'm just a dude with a platform that just wants to get the word out and try to uplift my community. And I want to bring our brothers together, man, because we could be so much better than what we are. But we're just a bunch of wounded warriors just going to battle every day, never, ever healed from the previous wound. Before I go, I want to tell you, so... I have two big mango trees in my backyard. I'm going to end with this. I have two big mango trees in my backyard. So we've been here for a couple of years now. And the one tree has always produced. And the other tree, I looked at it this year and I was like, man, you know, this tree is dying. This tree is dying. You know, the, the roots started looking all gray and and things like that. So I just, and the mangoes, um, no, the mangoes hadn't started yet, but the roots were looking all gray and, and, and the branches were looking all dried out and everything. Whereas when you look at the other tree, the other tree was all nice and green and plush and it was blossoming and things like that. So I told my wife, I was like, you know what? I said, I'm going to cut this tree down. So 
every day. I'd go out and I'd just cut whatever branches I could reach. I'd be out there. I got two chainsaws. I'd be out there just cutting down branches, cutting down branches. And I must have cut down like 10 big branches and a bunch of little ones. I did a real good butcher job on the tree. And um, I said that, you know, there was a couple of branches a little too high and they were in the um, in the power line. So I was looking to get some get professionals out here to cut them down and then I would take the rest of the tree down myself. So I cut the branches and I was going outside one day to go do some more cutting on the tree. And I noticed one of the branches that I cut off sprouted a new limb, like a new green limb. And I was like, well, wait a minute. This tree is like dead, dead. Like, what the hell is it doing just sprouting new branches like this? A couple of weeks went by and I looked up. I'm like, well, damn. Where are all these mangoes coming from? I'm thinking they're coming off of the good tree. I'm like, where are all these mangoes? Like gigantic, big, beautiful, sweet, ripe mangoes just falling off of the tree. And I told my wife, I was like, man, do you think this tree has a mind of his own, like it knew that I was getting ready to cut it down and it started to produce. And earlier this week, I went out there and I'm just looking at the tree and I was like, damn, I said, you know, all this tree needed was just a little bit of care. All this tree needed for me to do was to cut these old branches off. All the tree needed for me to do was to cut the old dried up branches off, get rid of them, give it a chance. And I like to liken men to that tree. All we need is a chance. Give us the opportunity to shed the old branches. Give us a chance to just get rid of the, the, the dead weight and the baggage and see what we could blossom into. Just give us a chance. I thank you guys for lending me your listening ear. Look at that. This is going to be under 45 minutes. Like I said, I will be on the Arena Uncensored um our show tomorrow it's it's a really good positive uplifting show about the black uh black by the black community i'll be making my uh youtube debut on a panel like i was on one saturday but it was just a like a quick two minute thing but I, I, i'll actually be the guest that they're interviewing so i will share the link to that after we do it because it's going to be tomorrow at six um uh, be sure to like that Facebook page, Straight Talk Society. Continue to spread the word about the show and let um, let everybody know, man, because if if one person like I got I got a little under 400 Facebook friends. And I always say this. If my Facebook friends that know me, you know, I, and I'm just talking to the people that really know me. If you guys would just listen to one show, I'm pretty sure you'll be hooked, first of all, and then just share it. That's it. I'm not asking for any money or anything. Just share the show. That's all I ask. Hit the like button on the Straight Talk Society. That's all I ask. Just help a brother get the spread the word out. That's it. That's all I ask. So I think that's it. So before I go, as always, I leave you with these words. Always seek out the truth for yourself, because if not, you'll fall victim to other people's interpretations of them. And with that, I say peace. Never been in my sight, extend my hand to the world, but they slap me in my face. Now I come get a taste of the hate that you help to create. If it wasn't for this mic music, I swear, I might lose it. It might take some years, but hell, I'm gonna prove it no greater time than the present. This Christmas ain't no present. I ain't got no job, so God, are you trying to teach me a lesson to be a better person? I'm worse than 
ever before It's like they got the hallway blocked off the heaven's door But the gates of hell is wide open My eyes open and I'm hoping people feel this real And know that I ain't joking Suicidal thoughts in my mind and in my heart Wondering will my time really stop before it starts Suicidal thoughts in my mind and in my heart Wondering will my time really stop before it starts Suicide, know that I wrote no room filled up with smoke. I kinda know which way I would go. Suffocate myself and choke. Grab the pillow, grab the sheets for my conscience. Grab the hold of me. I know one day I'm gonna die, but this ain't how it's supposed to Got a whole lot more for me to see and even more for me to achieve. God, I know that you're trying to holler at some change. Gotta swallow and maintain or get caught up in the game. Man, this world is full of snakes, full of fakes, and full of hate. So instead of suicide, it's homicide. I won't hesitate, do I have to kill to get respect? Okay, I will, I do accept, don't like me, then I hate you What the hell do you expect? I heard there's niggas really to me Well, I ain't met these niggas yet, I put that on my life Now how many niggas wanna bet? Suicidal thoughts in my mind and in my heart Wondering will my time really stop before it starts Suicidal thoughts in my mind and in my heart Wondering will my time really If you can't get enough of Straight Talk with Trevor, be sure to like our Facebook page. You'll get page-only exclusives like links to early shows and behind-the-scenes video footage. You can also participate in polls that might shape future shows. The best thing about our Facebook page is that's where you can get in direct contact with Trevor. You can also leave show topics, reviews, or even request to be a guest on the show. Again, like us on Facebook and thank you for your continued support.